In part two, we're going to look at how to write the equation of a circle. The first example is a circle centered at 2, negative 5, and radius 2. We know that our original equation, we'll just call it x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. That's the equation of a circle. I need to substitute h and k in, but since these signs are opposite, my new equation of the circle will be x minus 2 squared plus y plus 5 squared because this is going to be a minus negative 5. So it will simplify to a positive 5 squared equals r squared. Now the radius is 2 so I'm going to have to put 2 in and square it. This gives me x minus 2 quantity squared plus y plus 5 quantity squared equals 4. Now let's look at a center on the x-axis at negative 2 and radius of 5. It might be helpful if this sounds a little strange by definition if you draw a little sketch of what this might look like. We know the radius is 5, so r equals 5. We know it is centered on the x-axis, so that's our horizontal axis, so it's somewhere along this horizontal line. We know that if we go to the left 2, that will be the center of our circle. And that helps, because then I can figure out what this coordinate point is. The coordinate point is at negative 2, comma, 0. So I'll just write that, center at negative 2, 0. with radius equal to 5, therefore, that's the little three dots, r squared equals 25. And I have everything I need to write the equation. x plus 2 quantity squared plus y minus 0, so I just have a y squared, equals 25. Done. Now let's look at the endpoints of a diameter at p equals 4, 3, and q equals negative 6, negative 1. We have two points, p and q. Here's our circle. And we know that one of the points on the circle is 4, 3. And we know, and that's called p, point p. We also know that there is a point Q at negative 6, negative 1. And I need to find out how far it is from one of these points to the other because I know this is my diameter between those two points. If I find how long it is from one point to the other, I can then divide it in half, and that will give me my radius, r. We could look at how far this line, this diagonal line, goes horizontally and vertically, and then we could find the hypotenuse. If I look at 4, as my larger number, minus negative 6, 4 minus negative 6 will give me the horizontal distance, that's 10. Now let's find the change vertically. If we look for the vertical change, we would take the y coordinates, so 3 minus negative 1. That's going to give me a vertical shift from one point to the other 
of 4. Now I know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, so that gives me c is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. If we call this a, a is 10. If we call this b, b is 4. So 10 squared plus 4 squared. So the square root of 116 is equal to c, and that's the distance from p to q. If I wanted to find the radius, it would have to be 1 half of this. So r is equal to 1 half of c, the diameter, which is equal to the square root of 116 over 2. If I wanted to square this, r squared to get my formula would be 116 over 4. Now the last thing we need to know is where the center of this circle resides. And if I were to split the distance between the low point and the high point, I know that it's going to be 2 halfway through. So I know that if I go up from negative 1, that would be 0, 1. So this is a height of 1 for this coordinate point. And then if I look at the difference between negative 6 and 4, that's 10. So half of that would be 5. So if I count from negative 6, 5 units. Negative 6 is here, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. So the center of my circle is at negative 1, 1. That gives me x plus 1, quantity squared, plus y minus 1, quantity squared, equals 116 divided by 4.